Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Modular. Today, I'm sort of right in the middle of something that I wanted to share with you. It's not been properly thought out or there's no real plan to it all, but it's kind of exciting and thrilling and complicated and messy and kind of like a slowly unfolding car crash of modular and computery nonsense. But as I keep telling myself, all the learning is in the doing. So I'm doing a bit of doing and I thought you might find this interesting. So in a nutshell, what I'm trying to do is get the computer to talk to the modular. Yeah, seems simple enough. Well, yeah, I mean, it's definitely something I've always wanted to do and achieve, and I've done a little bit of that. I mean, check out my videos on AC and DC coupling audio interfaces and how you route control voltage from your computer, your door, into the modular and back again. That's not what I'm doing this time. This time around, I have some audio, some vocals on the computer that I want to accompany with the modular. So how do you do that? Well, I reckon I've got quite a, a bit of it sort of working by using my friend the Hermod, the modular brain from Squarp Instruments. Now I will be doing a proper review of the Hermod at some point, unpacking all of its little secrets so that you understand it as fully as I yet do, will yet yet do, hope to, as I hope to at some point. But at the moment I'm just fiddling around with it and I'm having some successes and some sort of head scratching, but that is forming kind of the center of what it is that I'm trying to achieve here. And I thought you might find it interesting to see how I'm accomplishing any of that. Does it matter? Who knows? But let's just crash into it, shall we? So to start with, let me show you the song that I've been working on. I mean, this represents, if you like, one of the last tracks I did on a door. Before I sort of exploded out of myself into hardware, I did everything in the box. And this is one of the last tracks that I wrote entirely on computer. And I'd finally gotten around to getting some vocals sung on it by a good friend of mine called Hannah Claire. She came around and put down some beautiful tones over the top of this track. And of course, as soon as she did that, I was thinking, well, how do I get the modular in? Why can't I replace all of that, all that lovely door virtual instrument business with some real virtual instrument business? And this is what has pushed me down this little road into this disaster of an experiment. Now, let me give you a flavor of the task involved. So here's the project over here in Bitwig, running on my surface. So this is the track as it is at the moment on the door. So there you go, it's a jolly tune, it's a jolly thing, it's got lots of drums in it and breaks and nice paddy synths and stuff, it's got this piano bit at the end which goes a bit like this. <laughs> So yeah, it's not mixed 
uh, the vocals, that's just everything that was down. I'm going to be taking out various ideas and mixing that about at the moment. At the moment, it's all just raw. It's in there. It's exciting. It's edgy. It's all those sorts of things. And I want to replace all of the lovely door accompaniment with modular accompaniment. That's the plan. How the heck do you do that? Well, let me show you what I've done so far. The key to start with is all about the Hermod. This is what forms our connection between the computer and the modular. How does it form that connection? Via a USB cable. Oh yes, now the Hermod here has a USB device socket. I mean, normally speaking, you have a USB port on something, you plug a controller in, so I can plug a MIDI keyboard, for instance, into the Hermod and play in it. This is the opposite way around. This MIDI cable and this port turns the Hermod into a MIDI device. So you see this here, this here, this is the square USB socket, so it's that end of the cable, and that cable is then trooping over here and going into my hub here, which is going into the computer. Now, if we go to the device manager in the computer, what happened? Very simply, it now appears under sound video and game controllers. If you plug it in, Windows finds it, it installs it, and then it's just there. It's usable as a MIDI device within Bitwig. So once the Hermod is installed on the computer, then these various outputs here, the CV and gate outputs, channels one to eight, appear just as MIDI channels well, weirdly, two to nine, but that's just you know part of the weirdness we're not going to find any explanation for just at the moment. But you can access all of these via MIDI channel in Bitwig. That means that I could send MIDI out of Bitwig into the Hermod, into the modular as control voltage. It's a MIDI to CV converter. That's what Hermod is doing. You can get other MIDI to CV converters, just single modules that have got a MIDI port at the top and a bunch of CV outputs, that kind of thing. I don't have one of those. What I do have is the Hermod. So the Hermod is, via USB, becoming a USB MIDI to CV converter, over eight channels. Now that's incredibly useful. So that means I can farm out various bits from the project into the modular. Sounds like a great start. Let's do a bit of that. As I said, this is all kind of ad hoc and off the cuff. So if there's a lot of shaky camera stuff going on, then I apologize ahead of time. So I'm gonna be picking it up and putting it down, pointing it at things and working things out as we go. So, you know, just try to keep up, all right? So over here in Bitwig. See, the thing is with this actual project is that it's all mixed audio because I use it live. So I've had to dig out the original MIDI files, but I've found them. So if I select this channel here, this is, I've called it black BCO. This is the little MIDI clip that we're going to be using. And it's connected to the Hermod and it's going out of channel eight. Now channel eight, MIDI channel eight, actually refers to channel seven on the Hermod. Now I'm sure there's a reason for that. I can't remember what it is. But anyway, let's solo this particular track. So now I have a lot of stuff plugged in, as you can see, because I've been working on this patch and getting this sorted out all morning. So let's just see what's going on. So it's coming out of channel seven. You see channel seven is flashing there. That's our sequence coming out of there. So I've got the CV connected to the one volt per octave on the black VCO, and I've got the gate connected to the maths, which is connected to that also. Let's not worry about where that's going for the moment. <laughs> Let's see if I can get just that bass sound coming out. So what I've got is the MIDI coming from Bitwig through the Hermod to the black VCO here. If I run that along with the original bass line. So that's easy. And the black VCO is going through my Polybox filter here. And then I send it on a bit of a journey 
which I want to show you as well. So let me run that back again. Because what I did in addition to that is that I ran it through the Strymon A1 and this is routing out to a bank of three guitar pedals. Look at these! Cheap and cheerful guitar pedals you will not find. So I've got it going through a delay. And a reverb. And a chorus of a fancy. But probably the delay is enough. See, I told you this is going to be all, all over the place. I don't expect you to follow this any more than I'm following this. I'm just sort of giving it a go and showing you what the heck is going on. So my next task was to deal with some of the more paddy and electric piano type sounds. So for instance, the I have a really nice Rhodes going on in here. Let me see if I can pull that out. So I have this Rhodes bit here going on. And so I pulled out the MIDI for that, which I've got here. And I need to find something to run that through. But of course, I have no pads over here. I've got no polyphonic device. Or do I as such? Well, kind of I do. I have the pluck, the two HP Pluck, which has kind of four voice polyphony inside itself, although it can only take one note at a time. So actually the polyphony is about the sustaining of those notes, not taking four notes at once. So I could perhaps inject that into there. Let's check, see where it's coming out of. Channel seven, which means it's in channel six. Channel six is here. What happened to the rest of that? So I've got it coming through channel six on the Her mod going into here, I just need to turn it up, and to there, it's coming into this one. Interesting. But of course, it's only taking one note at a time. So is there something I can do about that? Well, yes, there is. And I can do that with the Her mod. So six, track six, let's find track six, which is there. Let's go to effects. And then in this effect, we're gonna add an arpeggiator.
as you can hear, is a little messy. I'm not going to worry about that for the moment. But let's turn off the roads. Just so that we have the pluck playing. And let's sort of restart it to see whether it can find its groove again. It's not perfect, but I could tidy up the MIDI in order to make that a little bit better and a little bit tighter. I've also got it running through Magneto over here. So that's a couple of bits. Okay, so uh, I also wanted to put together another pad because there's this other sort of glowy pad which comes and goes a bit like this. Now for that I decided to use the graphic VCO which is here. Now because of the state of my euro rack i don't have enough inputs and outputs and things and stuff i've put the sub and the main output from this through my abstract data mixer over here to mix those two together so what i thought i would do because again i don't have any polyphonic sound sources i would just use an interval to try to create an interesting semi chord in the graphic vco to have a little bit of that pad sound going on so it's in here somewhere. Now what I've done is that I've taken it through my Joe filter here, which has given it all that bubbliness, which might be a little bit overpowering. I haven't quite decided yet. But if I, if I take that out for the moment. I've simply got that note going on. Now this has been run via channel four, channel four on the Hermod. So if we check out channel four, with this particular track, I recorded it into the Hermod itself rather than into Bitwig for reasons I can't really explain, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. So I've made it uh, 32 steps long I think and there's one long note and then there's another long note and then there's a pause for 16 and then it comes back round and plays it again. I've also got that running through I think I don't know I've lost track yeah no I've got it running through the even tie delay as well just to give it something extra going on. I think what I'll do, I'm just going to trim that down a little bit. Now I understand that the Batumi has the ability to trim itself because I have the advanced firmware, but I can never remember actually how to do that. So I'm going to do it in an old school way of taking that through a trim, which I have over here, and just doing it in that fashion. Now the problem is now I have almost completely run out of patch cables. So if I attempt to bring these in a little bit together,
is very unlike what we had on the door, but at the same time, it's all right. Let's turn on some of those vocals and see whether it, it fits up. As I said at the beginning of this, this is just a, a, a crash. I'm just plowing on through, having a go. And that is starting to pull itself together. It's not quite right. There's a little bit of tuning weirdness going on and timing weirdness. But I do have MIDI coming out of Bitwig, going through the Her mod, controlling something. I've got things in the Her mod controlling something. I've got things in the Her mod controlling the MIDI from Bitwig into here then doing stuff with the arpeggiating and then i've got audio vocals coming from bitwig on the surface and it's all sort of in sync with each other isn't that exciting Hardly sure I've got that quite right. Something else I did though, rather than using the arpeggiator for the pluck, I actually played something instead. So rather than playing a chord like that, I you know I I fluffed it. I did it like that, and I put that I think in track two. So this is playing a slightly different sequence that I recorded in using the keyboard directly into her mod. Maker of the universe. It's a little bit better, I think. It's less busy, so there's less timing problems. That's working. So the next problem then has to be the percussion because in the original track, I've got a couple of nice kind of groovy loops going on. And you can't do those kind of breaky loops on your act quite so easily, not without having a whole sort of big drum machine type thing going on. I've got a, a little bit of stuff going on with the Bemona thing over here. I'm not sure why that's still running. Who knows? So I'm just going to bring those drums in just to see how that feels. So the drums are coming from the, the Similus and the Pico drums and the hi-hat there, just 
throwing a whole load of stuff in, modulating it and trying to move it about a bit. It can't really compete with the breaky loops that I had on there, but it's bringing its own flavor and needs a bit of work. Now with the loop that I've got going in Bitwig, the timing is doesn't seem to be quite right. It seems to be losing a little bit of itself, but it actually runs fine if you let it run much further rather than just looping it around. But as I say, this is an unrefined experiment. So the next thing to do then was a bit of the piano. There's a piano part at the end that I wanted to kind of replicate, and I'm going to do that with the STO. And it's the same deal as before. I'm just going to take the MIDI track of that, arpeggiate it through the Har mod, and apply it to it to see what happens. Here is the STO one. This one here, that's going to channel six, which means it's channel five on the Her mod. Let's unmute that if that makes any difference whatsoever. So we've got it coming out of this channel here into the STO. The STO is then rooting through the Demora just for fun. That's coming back into here. So you can hear that as just a single tone. So it's track five, effects, arpeggiator. I didn't say it's ever going to be awesome, did I? Not really. <laughs> so, I mean, all I'm really trying to show in this debacle is to show my working so far with Bitwig, computer on the Surface Pro over there, coming through her mod into the modular. It's starting to come together. I'm seeing the way that things are moving. I can see how I can start to sequence in Bitwig if I choose to, run it through the Her mod and directly into my modular, or sequencing directly into the Her mod and then into the modular. And I can take chords and stuff like that and produce single line melodies using the arpeggiator or other bits and pieces. The editing on the Her mod itself, I still find difficult. Editing individual notes seems to me to end up breaking whatever it was I recorded into it. But that's because I don't know it well enough yet. I'm still trying to work it out. But some of the effects like the arpeggiating and quantizing, bits and pieces like that within the Hermod are extraordinarily useful that you wouldn't necessarily get, necessarily, sometimes you do I think, in MIDI to CV converters. So from a MIDI to CV conversion point of view, the Hermod is working brilliantly. And the fact that I've got these eight channels to play with is excellent. I couldn't work out the sync particularly well, as in I've got the two to sync, yes, because when I press on these two buttons here, it tells me that it's syncing at a tempo of 100 via the device port, which is what it is, and its sync is set in there to send out to this. That's doing the job. But I can't get the Hermod to send sync out of itself to other things, to send any clock out. So I've had to create just a little sequence of, of steps in order to use that as a clock. And I'm sure that's something I can get over but I haven't managed to do it yet. Other issues I'm running into now with my setup is that I just don't have enough uh, inputs to mixers to mix stuff together. I mean, using the STO, what I wanted to do was to envelope it, then through the delay, and then hear it, but I don't have anywhere else to plug it into if I do that. So I'm having to run it through the delay first, 
then into the VCA and having a larger envelope just letting that all come crashing through, which is not ideal, but that's, that seems to be working. I'm using all of the mixers that I have, mixing different sources together in order to squeeze it all out of the rosy, out of a single output. And in some ways that's crazy. I mean, I need more VCAs. Of course, you always need more VCAs or some kind of mixer. I have to come up with a solution for that because I'm, I'm being restricted by what I can actually hear. And that's not restriction in a good way that's forcing me to be creative. I'm being phenomenally creative with my patching in order to get to hear everything. I just need to make things a bit simpler for myself in that regard. So now that I have everything running, I've got a baseline, I've got some kind of twangy roads thing, I've got a pad, and then I've got an arpeggiator all going on, and I've got some percussion. Why don't I see if that works alongside the whole vocal for an entire take, and I'll fiddle with things to see what happens. Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah, why not? Right, if I start with everything turned down, I guess. So that's the drums. That's everything else turned down there. Let's start with a little bit of a bass line. Right, let's give that a go, see how it goes.
It was something. I'm not entirely sure what that was, but it was something, I suppose. Yeah, interesting. It's a very interesting exercise. I mean, it's 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 creative and interesting, but also frustrating in trying to get things to work well together, experiencing how the timing can be really crap and what happens when you loop something and whether this is receiving the right information at the right time to this. There's, it has to be a little bit of elasticity between it. You can't expect it, I suppose, to be that sort of digital tightness that I'm used to in a door. But in there somewhere is a really good track. It's trying to fight its way out. And hopefully I can calm it down and craft it into something. Now, of course, the immediate problem I'm gonna have is that I don't yet know how to save anything in the Hermod. I'm gonna to have to look that up. <laughs> and of course, nothing here will get saved. It'll all just disappear once I unplug it. So I've now got to probably record it in order to keep it. Or maybe I'll just go back to the basics again and try it again and do something else and work up a different sort of sound. I don't know yet. It doesn't have everything it needs, I don't think. Well, maybe it's because I'm coming from a track which was too big initially. And then that throws up the question of whether it's worthwhile trying to translate or port a project from a door into modular. Surely modular has its own way of working and so I should be using that rather than trying to mimic something that was made in a door. See, interesting questions. All of this is bringing up interesting questions. But all I wanted to do for this video is just show you where I am, what was going on, because I thought it was interesting. I will get to a point where I can do a proper video on the Hermod and, and demonstrate exactly what I'm doing and know what I'm doing at the same time, which is always nice. Whereas this is just blundering about, but you know, that's just how I do things. But what I have learned is that the, the door to modular connection doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't have to be control voltage. You don't have to be trying to do control voltage from one to the other. You can do it over MIDI if really sequencing is, is kind of what you're after. Or you're after that connection to have uh, audio that's recorded, you know, audio tracks and normal door work on your door running alongside modular as if it's a MIDI instrument. Yeah, totally possible with something like the Hermod or some other MIDI to CV converter. It has its quirks and its hiccups and the, you know, the timing and tuning things you've got to think about do make for a slightly more involving experience, but that's what we've signed up for. We don't want all this turn on a MIDI synthesizer business and have it all in tune and working perfectly. Good God, no, that's far too easy. Where's the creativity in that? We want stuff that we have to bash into shape just to get it to respond to something at about 440 hertz. We want something which makes it so difficult for ourselves that we're pulling our own teeth out by the time we've actually got a tune written. No, that's not quite right. It's beautiful, this. It's, it, but it does take work. And that's another interesting discussion. Is the work worth it? Aren't I just better off getting a plug-in or VCV rack or something like that and having it all there and all working and all in tune and all in sync and all within the machine? Why am I faffing around with a bit of external hardware that's fighting against me all the time? Well, I don't believe it is fighting. I think it wants to be everything. And it's really into the idea of making music. You wouldn't say that about a piece of software. You wouldn't sort of invoke some kind of personality into it. Whereas with this, oh yeah, yeah, there's personality here. It works in the way that it wants to. And some of the swing and the misses and the, the crackle and the, the tuning, the tuningness of it all is all part of its makeup, all part of its character and is what it brings to the creative party. The fact that it's not easy, I'm prepared to accept that because I think the work is potentially worth it. Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, that'll do, I think, that'll do. I'm gonna bugger off now and do something else. And in the meantime, go and make some tunes. Thank <laughs> you.